The phone rang. I answered it. It was my dermatologist who said to me I should sit down. Was I alone? That he had some unfortunate news that the biopsy came back um, melanoma. And uh, I was devastated. I was in shock. I walked around the neighborhood just trying to grasp what I had just been told. And it was pretty traumatic. Nice girls don't stay for breakfast. That's what they all say. I remember thinking irrationally that I was fighting for my life with the first cancer. It was a stage three. And yet, equally as significant to me was the prospect of losing my voice. They resected the thyroid, and that was it. Post-surgery, I expected to have a hoarse voice. What I didn't anticipate was the length of time, and I, I couldn't sing. I couldn't sing a note. And this turned into weeks and months. My music has always been a way for me to express all kinds of emotion. And so I had no way of releasing that sadness because I couldn't sing. At the time though, I mean, 21 years old, you're trying to figure these things out. And then you slowly start to think to yourself, there's a potential here that I might not have my mother growing up. When I would talk to my mom though, she always did a good job, I guess, at, at well, attempting, I guess, to cover up really how much she was going through. My mom's one of the strongest uh, people that I know. She thought, this is something we can tackle. Mom kind of approached it in that lens, in I would a, say, yeah, from in my... something that she was going to beat. Yeah. So she, she really ch took on the challenge. And um, that's something that, that, that sticks with me. I went to see a speech pathologist at the General, who was just amazing. Every day for many years, I worked at regaining my voice. So the fall of 2014, I returned to singing professionally. I have it both. I have, I'm living my life and I'm singing. I sing every day. I'm writing a lot. I'm inspired by everything. On a clear 